Let us pray. Holy God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may hear and see what you have for us this day. Amen. There is a Norwegian proverb that says, all good things come in threes. The Sunday after Pentecost is, uh, we celebrate Trinity Sunday, a Sunday that offers a doctrine of the church as something for us to ponder and to live into. It sounds more like a seminary course of 15 weeks, actually. No other Sunday in the church year gets a doctrine. Aren't you so excited that you came to worship this morning? <laughs> but I like what Reverend Dr. Alice McKenzie from Perkins School of Divinity in Texas offers on today's theological conundrum. She says this, quote, so while according to Three Dog Nights hit 1969 song, one is the loneliest number, three seems to be the most memorable number. Fortunately, three seems to be the easiest number to remember. The rule of three is a principle that suggests that things that come in threes are inherently funnier, more satisfying, more effective than any other number of things. Audiences and readers are more likely to consume information presented in threes, from slogans, go, fight, win, to three-part dramas, beginning, middle, and end. Many things are structured in threes. A series of three often creates a progression in which the tension is created, built up, and finally then released. Similarly, adjectives are often grouped in threes to emphasize an idea. The Latin phrase, omni trium perfectum, everything that comes in threes is perfect, or every set of three is complete, conveys the same idea as the rule of three. She continues, we read three little pigs, three billy goats gruff, Goldilocks and the three bears before we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a knife and a fork and a spoon. We hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, despite the fact that we are threatened by lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> we play rock, paper, scissors, and we enter into life lock, stock, and barrel. Our goals in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We count on the judicial, legislative, and executive branches of government to assist us in this pursuit. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Because we cherish our government of the people, by the people, for the people. We live a hip, scap, skip, and a jump from a snap, crackle, pop. Our journey of life has a beginning, a middle, and an end. On the other journey, we encounter lights that may be red, yellow, or green. Our motto for the past, present, and future is what? Ready, set, go. Or if you're Nike, just do it. The poet Robert Frost said it this way. In three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life, he says. It goes on. And since it goes on, we have lived to face another day. Let's call on the power of three as we live this day. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, sustainer. The power of three has created us in the first place. That redeemed us in the second place, and that in the third place guides us into the moment by the inpouring of love of God into our thirsty hearts. Let's call on the power of three. Three in one, one in three. For the life of me, I don't know why we get this scripture passage today, why Jesus would have ever led with the words, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. By the time we get to this point in our text, 
Jesus has already shared a lot of things with his disciples. He must have seen the disciples nodding off in the afternoon sun. I know it's part of his farewell speech, a lengthy portion of the Gospel of John that stretches on many chapters. We know that John has a lot, to, or Jesus has a lot to say in the Gospel of John. But what Jesus says here is like saying, I have something important to tell you. But I just can't tell you right now. It's like calling a friend to say you have a secret to tell her, and then when she calls back, you don't pick up the phone. Come on, Jesus, what's going on here? It's like I turn to you this morning and say, I have something important to tell you about the essential part of our faith. I'm so glad you're here. You don't want to miss it. But I can't tell, I can't tell it to you today because you won't understand. It smacks in the face of not trusting his disciples, right? Of course, the reality is that there are many dimensions to our life in God that we don't understand and that we may not understand until we are seated at that heavenly banquet once again. In preparation for that day, I'm, I'm keeping the track of a long list of questions that I want to have answered. I don't know about you, you may have a list of questions that you are going to ask God when you meet God. Even though the Trinity wasn't really introduced at the time in which the Gospel of John was written, it was introduced later by an early church father named Tertullian. You can imagine that thinking about God as three makes for an interesting coffee hour conversation in the second century. We can think of it here in a few ways. The Trinity presented to us in the Gospel of John is the manifestation of God's love for us. That's it. The manifestation of God's love for us. It's a way of opening a door to the mystery of God that allows us to see ourselves embraced by it, embraced by God, embraced by the Trinity. The Holy Trinity is definitely one of those difficult, challenging, thought-provoking doctrines of our faith that is usually left to the associate minister on Trinity Sunday to try to clarify, and here we are. But we should not think of it as an exam question in the doctrine of the Trinity class, nor should it be an IQ test to identify superior intellect or weed out those who are not worthy. That's not what this is about. Rather, Catherine Maori Lacuna explains in her book, God for Us, that the Trinity is, quote, ultimately a practical doctrine with radical consequences for Christian life. Think about that, a doctrine with radical consequences to Christian life. It is specifically Christ the Christian way of speaking about God and what it means to participate in the life of God through Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Catch that word? Participate. Participate in the life of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Unquote. Encountering Jesus, early disciples found themselves face to face with Emmanuel. God with us, the good shepherd who seeks and finds and saves the lost. Encountering the spirit, the early disciples found themselves heart to heart with God, the, the inspiring guide and advocate who makes the church possible and sustains creation. The disciples were to go out and make disciples of all nations. That's what Jesus asked of them bringing people to know the one true God known in Jesus Christ. So to us, as Christians, the witness of scripture is the power of three. We are encouraged to remember and to call on the power of three, three in one and one in three in any given situation, no matter how trying and complicated that is. Let me tell you a few things that happen in church life that will rotate around threes. We plan ahead for our worship services three weeks ahead. When it's time to have work done around the church, we like to get three quotes. See how that works? We are already Trinitarian in the way that we function as a church. Regardless of a doctrine, 
that's just good practice. To us as Christians, the witness of Scripture is the power of three. Perhaps the best way to ease into this complicated theological construct is to lean on those teachings of Jesus and maybe Paul. Love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul's writings had a lot to do with how to live out a faithful life. He offers a set of three. Remember this one? For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. That I know now only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. The greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. In the end, the Trinity is about a God who is living and active in our lives. God is creating and recreating in us, teaching and guiding us, refining and empowering us. Because the power of God is in our lives now, we can be real, it can be realized in the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. What does that look like? Because the power of God is in our lives, we can look to God, who can create in us new lives worthy of our call. We can be amazed at the redeemer who makes all things new. We can be enveloped by the sustainer who will do just that, to sustain us in our time of discord and uncertainty and the one who will call us forth into new and powerful things in the name of the Holy Trinity, in the name of God, so that we may glorify the one who was and is and is to come. God is relational. The Trinity is relational. And if God is relational and communal and accessible, then maybe we should be too. As God is in relational, maybe we can be sustained by the Spirit in Jesus Christ to be one with God as well. So let us think about what it might be to be filled with this hope that God gives us with the Spirit. Part of being a hope-filled community is to strive to be a place that knows that we don't have all the answers and that we're not perfect. And that it doesn't, that we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we take God seriously. And part of a hope-filled community is to be part of something that actively seeks a relationship with the living God, and one that makes space for conversation, and one that makes, that values those who bring different voices and experiences in the midst. And to live into this day and into the next season of the church year is to be bold, people of God, to be bold, to be courageous, to be welcoming and inclusive and trusting. It means that this month, when we celebrate pride, that we boldly proclaim a God that loves us and whom we love, a God that celebrates the diversity of life in all forms, and a God who rejoices in a community that welcomes all. And a community like that is creative and productive and seeks justice in the world. And may our hope this day and always be in the triune God who offers us faith and hope and love just as we are, for the sake of the church. Amen.